man, I may have splurged a bit. But nobody's got really good benchmarks on other algos, so let's go for it. Still not positive that it's not a box of box of bricks. This thing is heavy. Yeah. Still sealed. All right. All right. Stupid big. Oh my god. That thing is insane. Wow. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Power adapter. Cool. A booklet. Quick start guide. 482 pages of a quick start guide. Awesome. And then a support guide. Huh. All right. Let's see if I can get this thing put in there. Give it its own power supply. Start doing some benchmarks. Just a quick reference before I throw it in the case. I thought that 2080 Ti was massive. Then I saw that one. And that one. <laughs> that is just insane so that's going in the case I'll be doing my game in on that guy gotta get it in there be back in a bit been fighting with this thing for the last hour as I always do anytime I mess with the cards I know this motherboard can do five cards and I got one inside and four on the outside and every time I plugged in the fifth one, it would just get stuck and never load the, the hard drive. I would get a boot logo, and then it just would never load the hard drive. Activity light would never go on. Um, <laughs> I went in there and realized I still had the internal graphics going still. Uh, turned that off and loaded right up with the five cards got it all going now that's my hard drive light going windows is booting we'll reload some drivers all right day two got all the cards going i was struggling getting the five working then i realized i had the internal graphics going so make sure to disable your built-in motherboard graphics if you're struggling to get more than a couple cards going could help out so as soon as i disabled it I was able to boot right up. It just kept stopping at the hard drive loading. Just wouldn't do it. But yeah, running this guy, I just restarted it. I got to do the memory really low right now. I'm at a negative 600 just to keep the temps at around 102 after it's been running for an hour or so. It gets, creeps up to about 102 with a 100% fan. Core locking it at 1050 and getting around 99. It's running desktop right now, so it's running way, way low. But yeah, sitting at like 99 mega hash at like 100, 102 on the memory. So I ordered some of the thermal pads to do the just the back plate for now. I'm going to try that out first. Honestly, I knew I was going to have to do that. Uh, I was hoping I could just throw a fan on it, not have to take this card apart. It was the whole reason I was pretty late to the party on getting one of these, seeing how there's just so many problems with them. Uh, you know, if you can get them at 120, but 300 watts isn't very efficient. But I was kind of hoping it would be really good at other algos like MTP or Raven or something like that. So I still got to bench some of those. I did some testing today with NTP, and it was okay. But uh, once I get these thermal pads swapped out, those are showing up tomorrow. Then I'll be back. Maybe for that video, I'll make my desktop uh, one of these other cards so we can see full hash rate on it. So... Unfortunately, I have to do the thermal pads. I did not want to have to do that on a premium <laughs> video card. It's pretty terrible that you have to. Go to see what it's like in some gaming. I did some gaming on it last night. Just some Rocket League, nothing too intense, and it ran great. But, you know, it's Rocket League. It's not drawn much. Uh, yeah, I'll be back tomorrow once I get these pads chained out. All right, day three. I got my thermal pads. 
Got the 1.5 millimeter. Hope I got enough. I was only planning on doing the back plate, but it looks like the card comes apart pretty easy after getting that back plate off, so I'll probably just do the, the GPU side, the die side as well, since it's that far apart. I hope I have enough. We'll see. Uh, I got my ruler, got my blade. If you use scissors, kind of squashes it, so it's a little easier to cut with a blade versus a pair of scissors. So I'm going to tear this thing down. I don't know how much I'll show during the teardown. Not really a teardown channel, so I'm going to take my time, do it right, not worry about holding the camera while doing it. So be back in a bit. I got the back plate off, and I was going to finish taking it apart. I got the I.O. shield off of there, and the video I was watching on the teardown, uh, Gamer's Nexus, <laughs> he starts saying how he, he hates taking it apart. They never act right after that. It's a pain with the, with the thermal pads, and I'm just, I don't feel comfortable going that far. It's an expensive card. I'll do the backplate mod, see how that helps, but that's where I'm at now. Got those cleaned off. Time to start cutting some thermal pads. Alright, it's all back together. That was terrifying. I don't mind taking apart an old 1070 or something, but man. It's really cool how it comes apart. This little piece here is magnetic. And then these little screw caps, those are magnetic. Four of those. And then the screws, four screws under there, four screws under there, and it comes right off, so. As far as taking that apart, not too bad, but still terrifying. So while editing, I realized I'm missing a big chunk of the video. I did the backplate mod, and it only dropped the temps like 6 degrees, so I really couldn't bring the memory back up anymore. I was at like negative 600 to keep it on at 100, and I was able to bring it up to like negative 300. Only getting just a couple more hash, nothing major, so got into it the next day and ripped it apart completely. Alright, so I got the backplate back off. This is the cable that was terrifying me. So, to get that cable off, you would think that you would pull, but it's actually a lift. So I had to get my tweezers. Here, let me, let me put it back in and kind of try to show you what I did. Not a tear down channel, so I'm trying to hold the camera. So I pushed down to put it back in, and to get it out of there, I slid my tweezers under and lifted, and it came right off. Still terrifying. That's what I didn't want to do on the first time, but uh, temps only dropped like six degrees at best by doing the back plate, so I got to do both sides. Just scary, but it's got to be done, unfortunately. So I'm back at it. All right, all back together again for the second time. Wasn't as scary as I thought doing the other side. Um, the first thing I looked at online showed that there was like thermal pads that were kind of shaped like angles like this and stuff like that so i don't know if that's newer versions of the card that have those but when i opened mine up they were just a bunch of bunch of skinny pieces nothing major but that's the mess left over and these things are terrible like just so flimsy you can see there's like threads in it it's so weird the uh the little gray pieces there the thermal paste that, that it was all dried up and nasty and for the most part used two two of the pads so i got one extra so one for the front one for the back and that was the 1.5 when the when i took it apart these were a little thicker than 1.5 but they're super squishy might be twos or something like that or 1.75 or something weird but everybody keeps claiming online that 1.5 is the way to go all the way around on the founders edition cards i'm not sure on the any other cards but this is the one I got. This is the one I did. Let's get this thing back in there. See what kind of temps we got. Alright, we're back. Card is fully installed. I don't have it running desktop right now, so we can see the hash on it. Got desktop going on this 2080 Ti. Uh, when it was the desktop, it was getting like 120, 121. So now that it's just mining away, getting it even a little better, 122. So did a bunch of tests here on Ethereum. I went with the core locking started at this is where I had to start was the 1050 core negative 600 memory just to keep it under 100 and on the memory so that's how bad 
the overheating was. So now I am up to winner winner is 1200 memory with 1125 core. Now I'm getting 122 at 297 watts. So when it was desktop, 121, 296. Did a lot of up and downs, tested all the kinds of different combinations, like how much core you actually need, and worked out pretty well now. So it's running great. Highest I've seen it is like 102 here. So now that it's hashing a little quicker, it was, was sitting at about 100. But now that it's hashing a little quicker, not being desktop, kind of scary taking apart a two-day-old video card that costs that much. It's kind of the whole reason I hadn't gotten one up till now. But I saw prices were finally coming down on aftermarket, so figured I'd give it a try, play around with it, test out some other algos. I did MTP so far. So my settings, I did 80% power, 100 core, negative 1,000 memory, and was getting about 6.5, 279 watts. Overall efficiencies, sitting closer to like a 2070 Super or something like that. It's 3090, getting 40.5 efficiency rating. Better than a 2080 Super, less than a 2070 Super, but hey. So it's like buying a couple of those cards all in one video card, so that's kind of nice. So it's a lot of hash for one card. Uh, I did some gaming on it so far, and the thing is a beast. Beast for gaming, so that'll be fun. Uh, I did some MTP tests, puts my efficiency rating... Again, like a 2070, 2070 Super, so nowhere near a 37 or 2080s. But still, it's a lot of hash for, for one video card. So I get the appeal. you got limited space, throwing six of these in a rig. Well, it was fun, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. Leave a comment. Please hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you on the next one. Later.